there, welcome back to some more Forza Motorsport 4 today. We'll continue on the Let's Play. This is episode 43. In today's episode, we are taking a look at the Renault Showcase. For that, we need a Renault, or Renault. And the car we're using is the 2007 Renault Clio RS197. Why? I don't know. I really don't. I, I don't have a witty comeback or anything to say why we're using... I mean, it had to be one of the Clios because I used them again in the previous game and... I mean, out of the two, this is the rearer one of the two, because the RS is in other games. You can rear-wheel drive swap it, if you, you know, mentally damaged. Azza, you know Renos. No, I don't. Azza, you know Renos. I haven't bought this <laughs> in the correct colour. Uh, do I have I Renault want, You need to give I it gold wheels. To calm. You need to give it gold wheels to match his. I can't be asked to put that much effort into it. Uh, Boring. Renault Showcase. Generations of Renault from the 5 Turbo to the Clio Sport share the asphalt in this race. Camino Vehu de Montserrat a shot target. Split grill, gang. Hell yeah. Split grill, mm. best grill. I'm gonna hang my dog. <laughs> <laughs> As is torment. I mean, look at it this way. A Clio has never been crashed into a wall at 5 miles per hour. That is a good point. It's been crashed into a grass mound at 5 miles an hour. Yeah, but grass mounds do less damage. I thought it was a mud mound. Well, the same fucking thing. Yeah, Cleo didn't have his fucking whole face beaten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just think, the, actually no, in fairness, it would have been worse in the Renault because the Renault didn't have ABS, so it would have... Oh my god. That is the oh, most no. Renault thing I've ever seen. It looks awful. The rev counter, the numbers get bigger. Oh no! Look at that! That is oh. horrendous. <laughs> Do you like consistency? Well, too bad. Hey, actually, this irritates me. Actually, no, this is more irritating than uh, my usual ish. You know Chevrolets? Oh god. They have this awful, awful speedo that like goes up to like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And then once it gets to 100, it then like... Bear in mind, it's the same like circular length, but the needle slows down because it's like 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. That's stupid. Which I guess makes sense for efficiency, but like it looks awful. Or I mean, it could be like... More logical, or it could be like... Though. Or, or could it be like the challenger and have it go up by 30s? Oh god. Oh, what? <laughs> no. What? Oh, Actually, yeah. no, you've... Yours is Canadian, isn't it? Oh, so. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah. There you go. It makes a bit more sense there. I just wanted to point that out, like... The, the, I could just get this image of, like, the challenger speedo being the most American thing ever, where it's really small and just says, like, 30, 60, 90, 120, 180. That's it. No Skips speed. 150. <laughs> no, it misses 150. The top speed's 150, but the speedo says 180 because Dodge wants you to feel like a man. No, it keeps going up until like 270. <laughs> yeah, like the old Gran Turismo speedos. <laughs> Mind you, this no. apparently goes up to 250. Which is... Well, I mean, the top speed of a Challenger is like 173 or something. Like that, so... 250 kilometers. If I can get to 173, I'll eat my children. Well, the speedometer goes up to 300, so... The speedometer in my car goes up to, like, 1 at 60. There's no way it's going near 160. According to Honda, no. it'll do 141. You I'm know what's the piece of design you, you'll hate, actually, is the, um... The R34, uh, tacos. I mean, if I had a good downhill stretch, I'd probably get the, uh, Firebird up to 120. Yeah, but the Challenger's like got the same aerodynamic shape as a bomb. Okay, I could still go up to one. But Reynolds was more aerodynamic than the fucking Challenger was. <laughs> like literal Burt Reynolds. Reynolds. Mustache was more aerodynamic. Yeah, his literally. mustache was more aerodynamic. How do you think he got the um, the Trans Am to turn? Literally, that thing just acts as a giant front wing. Facial hair is just natural downfalls. Aerodynamics. <laughs> Aerodynamics. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna get my head cut next time, like a fucking spoiler. I had mine cut today. I should have asked for some diffuser strikes in it. Oh no. 
<laughs> I hate waiting to get my hair cut. It's it'd it'd nice be like, oh, you're trying to like resemble the new footballers things. No, I'm trying to resemble the rear bumper one... of the Renault Clio RS 197. I, I thought you. I thought you. I said, Boost. I thought you'd be one to shave your head bald just for rate reduction. Yeah, I mean that's a possibility. He's got to shave but, uh, off like his eyebrows and everything. I also, I also, reduction. I also like to keep my head warm. So, he's got um, the problem he's is, if you really wanted to do weight reduction, you wouldn't be six foot one. He'd like be my size. Yeah, <laughs> I'd sort of, I'd like I could take a bit out of my shins. He, he's gonna look like uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin without a goatee. Yeah. <laughs> so he's gonna like uh, Wings of Redemption when he's shaved his whole head. Good news, Excuse Azar, I'm sure to clear. Good. A bit. Anyways, what were you gonna say that was interesting about the R34's attack commenters? No, have you seen the, um, what is it, is it the Spec V, I think, that specifically has it, where it, the taco goes up to 11k? Yes. But they could actually fit it in, so they just, like, sort of shorten the lower half. Yeah, yeah, it goes, like, 1, 2, 3, and then it, like, starts going normal, doesn't it? Nice. Mm. In fairness, though, I mean, you shouldn't really be changing up before 3, I guess. Mm. Ah. Yeah, but consider the card I like, even rev to eight. <laughs> you know, there's like three k of RPM there that just you don't use. I don't think it rev to yeah. eight. It's going It'll to be, be worse. No, it's probably like seven. Seven five. ish. I. Yeah. I don't think it would go much beyond seven. And the ninety Civics had a tack on it that went up to ten k. I mean, the Civic Type R from the nineties got. I mean, that was like the red line on that was like eight, eight and a half. Uh, then you had Spoon. Yeah, those Spoon Civics could like legitimately do like 12.5k. Yeah. What was the S2000? It was 8.6 or something? 8.7? That was quite far up as well. I think I think the AP1 S2000 literally went to 9. Yes, it did actually, yeah, because they had to reduce it to 8.9 for the facelifted one because they gave it more torque. And gave everyone, it a bigger engine and everyone was like, hey, it's not as much top end, it's like, you've lost 100 RPM, shut the fuck up. No, nothing. In fairness, I mean, my car, for what it is, revs quite high. And it goes up to 7.4, which for a large capacity four-cylinder is quite good, I think. I think. Yeah, that's quite impressive, actually. I, 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 I can see why the transmission's exploding now. Now I need to fucking look at the tachometer of the challenger. Does my car have the highest red line? Hmm. I don't think it's my car. No, it's, it's not. Yeah. My panda <laughs> red lined at five. Wow. <laughs> I think yours legitimately will be five five. Probably. Because they build that engine to just survive stuff. I.e. Yeah. third world countries. Do you know how you can tell this is a Renault? How? The little picture of the car in the in the dashboard says that one of the doors is open. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Oh, it's got a little picture of the door open. That's amazing. You can also tell it's a Renault because this interior is the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Ah. Also, we've gone back to front wheel drive cars that can't really turn very well. Mm. You know, I do wonder. If... How. Actually, the RX7 might. Mm. Magic it's not a performance RX7, is it? Is, so I don't actually know. The Challenger, I can imagine, like 6.5, maybe. I don't think it can. Yeah. Much red line on the Challenger, I can't imagine it's like much the actual, beyond six. I don't know what the actual fucking rev limiter is. Because it, like, cuts all power at the red line. Oh. <laughs> hmm. I was like, oh. <laughs> Mine won't let it reach it, so. Like, even if you stick it into manual mode, it goes into, like, well, we're preserving the engine. I've never tried it. I can't say I've ever... No, I hit the red line in one car once. It was the Polo. 
Of course you did. I just didn't do anything. <laughs> Look, when you go like 50 horsepower in the shortest gear ratio known to man, because the top speed of that car was gear limited of all things, which was hilarious. 90 miles an hour, 5 speed transmission. It did like 4,000 on the motorway at 70 in 5th gear. Did Volkswagen understand what fuel economy gearing is? Nope. It had 50 brake horsepower, it needed some power somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but like... Because it just had like... <laughs> the Clio did the same thing the Peugeot did. That, that's my favourite camera angle, that one. Yeah. Well, there you go, that's two thumbnail set up for you now. Get on it. <laughs> it's just the Peugeot was sideways, the Clio just yeets. <laughs> I'm getting lucky with these affinity bonuses. Like the, uh, whatchamacallits. The, uh, random bonuses. Oh, apparently, uh, 6400 is rep technically rev limiter. Okay, that makes sense. Actually, I think the Why Polo revved quite high, actually. Why the tachometer goes to 8 grand, I'll have n no idea. My tack goes to 8. Because cool points. No, it's ace because like the eight has got like the tiny. It's literally got the smallest smithereen of red to the point where they probably shouldn't have just put it in, or I wouldn't have bothered. Minor issues. We need upgrades because um, the V6 Clio's on Silverstone can kill us. Uh, we don't really need power or handling. Well, we need power, but not handling particularly. Fucking big exhaust sticker! Fucking air filters! There we go, let's fucking go. Let's go, go, go. And. back to it. Back to the, back to the, back to the beat. Back to the, back to the, back to the beast. Back to the beat. I'm gonna get a pen, one sec. I need a pen. God damn it. Imagine using the medium known as writing. There we go. Yep. Oh shit, my phone. Oh. The phone almost went for a dive. A dive down memory lane. Yay. Let's see if our Renault is any quicker. I wonder what the red line is on this Renault. Six. Seven ish. Yeah, seven. Yeah. On this Renault Clio RS 197. Wow. You know what I find funny in Mill though? Shoot. I only have the second heaviest car in the server. Second heaviest? Yeah, the racer's car is heavier. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. I forgot you bought tank. Who's got the lightest car? Base? Maybe? Uh, uh, zero Ducks given, probably. No, no, mine's like under 1,000 kilos. My Panda would have been lighter than yours. Because the Panda is lighter yeah. than the 500. Yeah, but it would have been less rigid. Yeah, but it would have had the smaller engine, which means it's lighter. Fire. Fire! I have a fire. 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 I love fire. that engine fire. name. Fire. I like how it's the most ridiculous acronym as well. It's like fully internally robotic managed engine or some shit. They knew, that they knew what they were doing. Hell yeah. We the Italian job. Below. So one thing I've just noticed there's a big issue for this clear. What? It's right-hand drive. Yeah. And the speedo's in kilometers, so that means this is a 
Japanese Clio RS197? I didn't think the Japanese were stupid enough to get these, but apparently they were. I'm still, still confused that why someone would import a uh, version 206. Because continental Americans, for whatever reason, have a weird obsession with the Peugeot 206. But this is Canada. Shut up, Sean. I'll come to your house and fucking shove an Astra up your anus. You can't talk shit about the Panda. It's, Mo it's Mopar fame. My Panda wasn't. <laughs> My Panda was independent Fiat. Which is weird to say. Still Mopar now. Yep. Actually, Boost isn't Mopar even. Because it's. Wait, it isn't. No, yours is just Ever, before, isn't it? Everyone's a Mopar fam. But. Mopar or no car? Yeah, you're not Mopar. I'm sorry. There he is. No, his was not built in the Mopar era. I like yeah. to think that Mopar is more of a way of living. Yeah. <laughs> I, wake up, I wake up every day, pledge allegiance to the bald eagle in George Washington, and then walk out and get in my Fiat America, 500. America, fuck yeah. Amer <laughs> Basically, oh, it's like the intro to American Dad. <laughs> yes. Uh, At least speed run. Good morning, USA. I have a feeling that it's going to be a wonderful day. Jump in my Fiat, meal. start up the engine. Yes. Wait, you... The fucking, uh, ad, th that ad needs to be remade now with V at 500s. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> oh, yeah! Yes. <laughs> yes. Good morning, Fiat, yeah. Good I like morning, this plan. FCA. Should I go and do that? Yes. Get on that. Good man. You need to go to your local Dodge dealership and buy all the Mopar stickers you can. We, we have a local Dodge, Dodge dealer here. Yeah. What, what's a Dodge dealer? I'm sure there's like one dilapidated fucking Dodge dealership. Where I they genuinely sold. don't know how <laughs> Dodges were sold here. I don't think they had dealers for them. I don't actually know how they sold them. I don't know if Chrysler had a network. They just appeared one day. Your local, you gotta hold, you gotta call up your local dilapidated uh, Chrysler. God, how did dealership? They... <laughs> Who did Chrysler own? Dodge Jeep. Plymouth. They might have sold them through Jeep D. Yeah, that's how they might have done it. They might have right. had like Jeep so you know what? subsidiaries because people you know like what you should do. Import Jeeps. So you know what you should you should do, Boost. Yeah. What? Head on down to the your local Jeep dealership and buy Deep. all the Mopar stickers you can. I you, should. You don't even need to do that. If you go on Fiat's website, you can buy like. Stuff quote from Mopar accessories. And Mopar accessories include stuff like a roof rack for your Fiat Tipo station wagon. <laughs> or maybe some surfboards for your Fiat 500L. <laughs> what do this? Or, I don't know, running boards for your Jeep Renegade. Do you know why? No. Because I, I mean, say you're... hey, 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 a living unlike a renegade. Remember those adverts? Where they like was like nine speed automatic transmission was like what the fuck? Oh, fun little thing for you. What was the first car to have a seven speed manual gearbox? I don't know. Um I'm guessing Mercedes. You'll say Mercedes as a Mercedes don't know boost? I... I'm going to say an AD. Nope. Porsche? Yep. That tracks. The 991. Okay. I... You didn't go for what I all expected you to go for. What? Well, C7 eh? Corvette. Why would any of us have gone for that? Because yeah. that was like the only car I remember being publicly like said that, hey, it has a 7-speed manual. Other than that Aston Martin track car they did. The watch and cop. Yeah, see, Sean said see something like that. Ha, Sean, you're an idiot. Ah. 
kill on. I, I, like. I thought C7, but then I thought CLK 500. CLK? Yeah. Mercedes don't know what manual transmissions are. <laughs> yeah, they do. They're a thing for poor people. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> legitimately, I can't remember. Well, you said seven seat gearbox, so I. Well, you didn't also, specify. Yeah, maybe, but. I mean, they have the 7G. That's actually a good question. What was the first 7 speed oil? Um. First seven speed also. It wouldn't surprise me if that was Mercedes. It's got to be German because Germans know actually, Germans actually know how to build transmissions because they have ZF. Or ZF. ZF. Yeah. They have the eight speed. I think ZF were the first with the eight speed autos, which is like in everything. My feeling when my favorite creator on the site just got outed for being a nonce. I'm not a nonce. Oh, someone else. Obviously, I'm not your favourite. Who, who is it? It's most probably bollocks if it's on the internet, as we've learned this year. Whoever uh, fires the first shot gets shot last. <laughs> oh, Pyrocynical. Oh, people have tried to say about Pyrocynical for years. I won't worry about that too much. Why is he a nonce? Keemstar literally said he was trying to date a 13 year old French girl, so. To be fair, he does look like a lesbian, so he could probably get away with it. I haven't watched a pyro video in ages. I think the last video I saw of pyro was when he was all that fucking hunt down the freeman. Remember that game? Oh, yeah! Do you know what my favourite bit about that game was? What? Keemstar played the fucking. uh, president. So, Emil. Yo. Are you gonna buy me a fucking. MG teddy bear for Christmas. No, I'm gonna buy you some Subaru balloons. <laughs> 36 of them. I want the teddy bear. Teddy bear's ridiculous. Did he know she was 14? Or he? That's the important question, really. I have the MG teddy bear right next to me. Holy shit, there you go. World Record Contender, ooh, level 39. I wonder what that's going to be. Bugatti! SSC. We got a choice Tennessee. of the 2011 Koenigsegg Algera, the 2006 Koenigsegg CCX, the 2009 Bugatti Veyron 16.4, the 2010 SSC Ultimate Aero, and the 2004 Celine S7. There's an obvious choice here. Koenigsegg, CCX, let's go. Because I need this for something later. And it also comes in purple. It's the only one that does. Sorry, the Selena 7 is a world record contender. I mean, it did like 230, but... Well, supposedly. That's, Anyways. It wasn't even close to world record contender. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching. Next time we're going to be taking a look at an event that I'm sure you all struggle with. The 50s Legend Showcase. Join us for that. Until then, farewell. You Knowing just where my hopes and dreams are going